is three and a half months ago. You, you look, look. Yeah, but I'm younger than you. So my question <laughs> is, when is your hip surgery scheduled? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> until, I, until I fall off the couch again. <laughs> on the floor, bam. No, oh, <laughs> but you're looking good. You're moving good. You're strong. Like starting, this, starting. This yeah. is getting good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting there. They had uh, Payard had hip yes. surgery too. Yes. Yes. And I remember the first time during that time, everybody was saying, "We got to get hip surgery. We got to get hip surgery." And um, Payard, because he was in pain a long time ago in the '60s, yep. the last time he ever did, like I said, a split, mm -hmm. uh, it was a show called The Hollywood Palace. It was a sh great show. It came on every Sunday night. You could turn on and see most of all your um, performers, great dancers, singers, actors, and they would be hosts. They were the only group that was called back about five or six times on the show. And that time doing television, it was broadcast live. It wasn't like a movie, you tape it, videotape it, and um, edit it, and then you can show it later. No. When it's broadcasted, the whole world sees it, actually. So if you're singing a song or doing a dance step, if you mess up, the whole world sees it. It's unedited. It's just like, clunk, that is it. Uh, commercials and all. And um, that was the last time he, he was around doing this. Business. He was, at that time, in 67, he was in his... Yeah, 70s. 70s. 60s and yeah. 70s around that time. Just maybe to explain, because I don't know if anyone know when we talk about Fayette, who it is. Uh, have you heard about the Nicholas Brothers? How many of you have never heard about the Nicholas Brothers? Just raise your hands. Okay, it's not so many. Wow. Okay. Um, so Nicholas Brothers were tap dancers or flash dancers too, mm -hmm. and they were one of the most famous tap dancers in the old days. And it was Fayard and Harold Nicholas. And yesterday, when Chester, I don't know if you've been here, when Chester talked about how he started dancing, when he helped this older gentleman to fix his bike, and later got invited to his house and took tap classes from him. And Chester thought, ah, oh, yeah, this guy, I don't know what he can show me. <laughs> and uh, which was Fayard Nicholas. <laughs> that, that was the biggest mistake, <laughs> big mistake, you know, because I was getting frustrated. Ooh. But my mother was like, she was watching me, she said, she knows when I go out mm -hmm. to see something, I want to get it. Mm -hmm. I want to learn this, I want to learn that. Yeah. She said, you better take that man's yeah. offer up. You yeah. don't know what may come out of it. Your whole life came out of it. I sure did. <laughs> it, it, it did, you're right, you know. So you kids, listen to your parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lesson that we learn. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're backing you up in the art form, whatever you want to do. It's good to have people behind you and people in your life that encourage you to do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah we were lucky because we met Fayette many times uh, when we were in L.A. Because Babel and me, we lived four years in L.A. and we've been visiting many times before. And so we had a lot of talks with Fayette, which was amazing. And one time we were at a dinner at a restaurant together, and it was like four hours, I think, we're sitting there and just telling stories. Oh, God, he is something yeah. else. He is. And Fayette talked about, you know, his hip surgery there. It was pretty, pretty new at this time. Mm -hmm. And it was Ray Bolchers who had it first. That's correct. Yeah, That's and Ray right. Bolchers, if you don't know the name, but you maybe have seen uh, the, the famous. Wizard of Oz. It was a you know, Scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz movie. If you haven't seen it, get it. Yeah. Look for it. And he, is, he also was one of the most top tap dancers. Tap dancers, yeah. incredible tap dancer. Yeah. You know, eccentric and comedic tap dancer. He was great, you know. Yeah, and Ray was the first one who got a hip surgery. And afterwards, he talked to Fayette and said, hey, yeah, I'm so good. Everything is cool now again. Yeah. And then Fayette got his hip surgery. And then Frankie heard about it and because Frankie. he was in pain and yeah. because Ray and Fayot had the hip surgery, mm -hmm. Frankie did the hip surgery and then he jumped around again. Yes. <laughs> it's a, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah. Definitely. It's definitely a blessing. A blessing. God. Yeah, it's good. No pain. You can do Susie Q's again. Oh, what's a life without Susie Q? <laughs> 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 
do 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 do. Yep. So, the um, so f now we know that you took classes from Thea, but wh who were the other like uh, original other dancers that you took classes from? Okay, during that period of time, um, I was taking classes from them. We would have Wednesday night classes. Mm -hmm. They would tap classes, and they lasted from like like five o'clock to about mm -hmm. one or two in the morning. And you couldn't take your shoes off. You kept kept them on. So the the, the leather was getting like soggy. <laughs> we were walking. And at that time, I was looking at all his friends that were, they were all great dancers. And that was scratching me, you know. You know I'm going like, I, all your friends can dance. He said, he said, basically, yes, they can. And I would see these people, I said, they look familiar. And then, uh, not knowing until I got home and watched television, I go, that's the guy, he's in our class. But he's younger in the on the television, you know. <laughs> You not knowing this thing was shot 25 mm -hmm. years ago. I was, it was, who we had in the class was Donald O'Connor. Wow. Donald O'Connor was from Singing in the Rain, worked with Gene Kelly. We had Eleanor Powell. Eleanor Powell came in there. We had, uh, like again, I said, Argelia Thompson. He was the great son, grandson of U.S. Ulysses, um, a guy that did the soft shoe with Willie Colvin. Oh. And they were all in the class, just coming in. It was all show people from the great MGM, uh, MGM and RKM uh, studios at that time. And I'm up there looking at all these guys. I said, well, I, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I said, I got to learn how to do flaps. And Fayard had his own way of teaching flaps and shuffles and stuff. And he would sing the rhythm. And we had to go across the floor back and forth. And, you know, he said, no, I don't hear that. Move across the floor. And we had to fly across the floor. And, do, wait a minute. and that's how we learned a lot of stuff. Box steps. We did box steps, uh, scuffs. Um, and we had to do scuffs with your hands. Everything. It's not like scuff. No, you had to, at the same time, it, scuff with your hand. You know, and then we dig in. Ah, you know, we had to do all of that. And he said, do it then. The whole class is <laughs> going at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just a, it was a comical class. It was just fun. Um, the guy in there, Argelia Thompson, was the acrobatic guy. And he said, I want you to work with him on the flip. And that's how I used to do, I used to run up the side of walls. He used to back flips. I used to do stuff. We would have two people on the side run up the side of their backs and do flips. And we would, and do slides underneath the legs and, and stuff like that. Um, I was with Bayard for two years and a half. He was the first man that gave me my job to, my first job as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm learning steps, but he said, I got to leave. I got an emergency. I want you to take over the class. I'm going, me? He said, no, I showed you a lot of stuff. Now, make sure they go over this step, this step, and this step for this Wednesday. And the next Wednesday, I want you to go over here, here, here. I'll only be gone for a week. OK. I said, how am I going to teach these guys? These guys are better than me. <laughs> so I show up, and they're standing up like this. I said, OK. They said, OK, Chester, show us something. <laughs> and I said, I, <laughs> I did whatever I could do. And you know what they did? They just followed. <laughs> they did. Even though they were much better dancers, I, I followed. They just followed them. And if I did a mistake, they just helped me on it and said, go on, keep, going. keep mm -hmm. teaching us. Because they wanted to hear what was going in my head of how to teach you. So it made me a better teacher to reinforce the steps. So when we go by, Faye didn't show up. <laughs> what are I going to do this week? The class. What are we gonna do, Chester? I said, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> then I started making stuff up. <laughs> you know what? They just said, okay. <laughs> and they follow. Great class. See you next week. I said, uh, hope Fair's back here. <laughs> he didn't make it back. <laughs> so I'm up here creating stuff. But what happened was it 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 um, made me teach, and every week made me think about rhythms and stuff and a reinforcement. Not knowing at this time why this guy is gone and he comes back weeks later. I said, man, you left me with I said, oh, you're good, you're good. You, you got, had the class great, fantastic. 
not knowing they were still gigging. The Nicholas Brothers were still performing, and I didn't know this, my brain. And you got to remember at that time, I didn't know Fayard was the Nicholas Brothers. He was, I just, it was just this guy, we hang out, we had good times, and we were just having a good time. I didn't know he was famous. I didn't know he was a world famous dancer. I just knew he was a great dancer, and he said, take over my class, I'm gone. And, I, and he disappeared, and he's out gigging with his brother, and he comes back, oh, that was good. Okay, now we're gonna do this and this. Until later, Chuck, I, I looked on television that night, and I mm -hmm. caught him, and he told me that was, I was like, wow. Then he took me to a gentleman in Hollywood, in a cleaner, so I want, I want you to meet a great friend of mine. His name was Clarence Frenchy Landry. If you don't know that name, look it up. It was a group, a trio group called the, uh, the Three High Hatters. You know, they were real classy tails and high hat. And they do these things with the hat. They would do hats and top hats and canes, and they were just elegant. Really. He said, I want you to learn to move around the floor room smooth and elegant. You got this, this, this rhythm, and you got the, the hands there, but I want you to start getting the feet into it. I said, okay, I, and I met the gentleman. I said, we're going into a cleaners. What can I learn in a cleaners, you know? This guy comes out, oh, I was paying, oh, this is the guy? I said, okay, come on in the back. What, I'm going to work in the cleaners? <laughs> So you know how the cleaners yeah. hang, hang your clothes, right? Move to the right. Yeah, move you move to the right. Exchange, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the clothes go ching, 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 ching. The cleaners go around. I'm walking in, looking at these guys. In the middle of the, of, of the thing is a tap mat. He says, "Okay, let's get on here. Let's go." <laughs> While they're cleaning, I'm going like, "I don't believe this. I'm in a cleaners taking tap lessons." <laughs> but. That's how I learned the different things, how to drop the heels. And he said, you're gonna, lead, you're gonna meet a man named Bubbles one day. I'm calling, who's this Bubbles? I don't know who he is. You will learn this stuff. After I worked with him for about twice a week, then goes with Fayard, his friend would come in, always making a deal. Real fast guy, going, hey, hey man, I got a good deal. His name was Ezra Mosley. And I said, what are your friends? He said, great friend. He said, he's head of a dance group. I said, him? This guy's head of a dance group? He said, yeah. The group was called the Three Chocolatiers. The group that took uh, jazz and went to China. And they created a dance called the Peckin. You know, do 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 Became a world sensation. And that was a funny story. I said, you are head of the three chocolatiers? Yes. And he was the guy that taught me eccentric dancing. How to take a step and make it more comical and move around. You know, you have to make the hard step look like it's easy, and the easy steps look like it's hard. <laughs> you know, I said, that's kind of weird. He said, you'll learn it. And this guy was mastermind. He got his start from the guy in the cleaners. Then he introduced me to a lady named Frances Neely. <laughs> and she taught me of women's chorus line dances and all that. I learned women's chorus line dances with her. You can see her in a movie which is called The Boogie Woogie Sandman. And it's on, you know, on uh, YouTube. If you want to look that up, you'll see that. With the Count Basie Orchestra at that time. And then I met a gentleman named Bobby Johnson he was one of the first Afro-American stuntmen. And he would did all the stunt, but he did all of Bill Robinson's step. And he taught me a lot of Bill Robinson's uh, routines on the steps, going up and down the steps. Then I met a lot of other people just, just back, and they would throw me, okay, you gotta go visit so-and-so this day, you need to go visit so-and-so, but I'm looking at it, so I better start writing this stuff down. So I wrote terminologies down, I wrote all the stuff. Now, notice this time, working with these different dancers, they weren't words like you guys have, like uh, shuffles, ball chains, and stuff. And I'm going like, okay, okay, now we gotta do this. What's a boop? What's a bop? Which was the boop, boop, bop, bop, bop. I said, you gotta explain it. It's easy, don't you see it? 
Come on, you're going to do it with me. That made me realize a lot of dancers, that was great. Uh, some can teach, some can't. <laughs> some were great performers, but they can't, they can't teach. You know? But then you had those who can translate and get it. And that made me really realize, I say, the transition between the vernacular form and then when and dancing was going. Now, then at that time, I worked with Willie Colvan. Willie Colvan was the first guy that had studio on the MGM lot. He taught Eleanor Powell for the stair, um, uh, Ann Miller, uh, was it Dan Daly, all these great dancers. And he, they built a dance studio on him. He was great. Had, the group was called the Four Colvans. I mean, rapid fire feet, just moving incredibly fast. And he was responsible for that. A lot of these people, they, like Pete Nugent, um, uh, Willie Colvin, they didn't get credit in those movies of that time, you know. But they were made at the time for use for, they did Foley sounds. A lot of Foley sounds were when the dancers do the work and they had to come back and put the tap dancing on the sound back underneath them. Uh, Pete Nugent was the, the original Me and My Shadow. You know, mm -hmm. me and my shadow. Pete was the shadow. <laughs> and he would dance for everything you do behind you. And you think it's one person, but it's two different people dancing at the same time. I mean, them days, the dancing was unique. It's not like we had digital today. Uh, you could go on to YouTube or see this stuff. You know, it was very unique. You go out and see live people dancing, chorus lines and different people dancing right out there. You know, so, I mean, you had to go out there and you experienced it. And that's, you know, that's the good thing about it. But again, like I said, trying to learn the steps, that was a task. I mean, you know, I learned Fay art style, and then it was in my head, then I had to learn Frenchies, and then I had to learn the different ones how to do it. Now, the, there was a thing called parodies, a little parody song. If you wanted to do, I mean, how many of you know what a single time step is? Have you heard of it? No? You know it? You guys said, it's raise, show. Raise, raise, raise your hand up, those who know what it said, okay? Huh? Okay, if you raise the hand, you have to show it. <laughs> oh, we get scared now. But you raised your hand too. Okay. You okay. can show it now. Okay. Okay. Uh, time step is. You want to show is, it? I am going to. Oh, yeah, oh, you want. Oh, okay. okay. See, yesterday you made me split my underwear. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, it was not me, it was Brian. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Where's Brian at? Is he here? Okay, no, I want to make sure this is like, <laughs> Brian, you tell Brian he owed me some underwear. Okay, I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I didn't know I was going to do it. I said, when I got home, I said, I said woo, a little breeze is going <laughs> Woo. Okay. <laughs> a time step is to talk to the band without saying a word. You just hear this. Look at stuff like that. Now, how do you teach that? <laughs> okay, so you talk about it, parodies. Single time steps is a parody. It says, thanks for the boogie ride. Okay, say that. Thanks for the boogie ride. Thanks for the boogie ride. You know, like you, you know, you gotta remember this is like a long time from 1900s or 1800s. Say, thanks for the boogie ride. Thanks for the boogie ride. Because we didn't have no car. <laughs> you have no car, <laughs> you're riding in a buggy, you go into the town, and you said, and somebody say, hey, get on the back, the buggy, and you take you. So you're gonna say, thanks for the buggy ride. So, and then so when somebody says it to you, oh, you mean a single time stop. I think, oh, the buggy ride, thanks. Ah, the thanks. He rides, thanks. The ride. And that's how you learn the word. Yes? What was the name of the song? That's yeah. what came from. That's where it came from. The taps. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're gonna learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that they love you. Remember that song, right? Thank you for the funky right there. Right, that's where it comes from. A single time step, or a single buck time step. And they had different parodies. You find the parodies, and they had other stories going to go to the bucket. And then did that, and that's a double time step. Then you have another one, you go, and then that's a triple. You always add another beat within that time. And then when I hit the break, the band goes, and they drop that back in. So we had a series of time steps. Time steps were always a method of gathering time and, and making it work for you. Okay. If you're gonna be a, a, a tap dancer or a buck dancer at that time, okay? So, you know, that's what a time step is, okay? So I have to learn time steps. You have to learn breaks, the rhythm of the break that goes with it and change the rhythm, okay? Now, and that means you're learning phrases of music. You're not just being a dancer, you're becoming a musician at the same time. Instead, yes? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I gotta make sure. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, that's that's what I yeah, had to learn. Yeah. But I had to come up with a method at that time to, well, if I learn all this stuff, I'm gonna teach everybody else. <laughs> because ooh, uh, no, uh, like I get, you guys got video, videos you can rewind, go back and forth, see steps or the swing stuff. So I had to figure out a way. Um, I said, okay, I'm gonna get. We had we did have a cassette recorder. <laughs> So I said, I'm going to yeah. take it. I'm just going to do this. So I just decided. You know how you could tell that somebody's a dancer? I said. When you put in a VHS tape, and on a certain spot where it's really cool, it starts to go ah, because ah, on the forward ah, back. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> You've been watching that part. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I've got to get this. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. So it I, says how old I am. Do you guys know what a VHS is? Okay. Oh, okay. You know, we were lucky uh, when we had the first VHS <laughs> instructional tapes that Bevel and me did. Uh -huh. We had failed on one of the tapes. And he at the end, and he talked about it's all about the hands. All about the hands. hands yes. That's a whole other technique. Pre presentation, prayer, worship, I mean, yeah. you know, ta-da. And you all know about the Shim Sham? Mm -hmm. You know who invented the Shim Sham? Yeah. Oh, God. That's, you, who it? Leonard Reed, Reed and, and Rusty Bryan. Uh, Willie, Willie. Willie, sorry, my, I messed yes. it up. Yeah, uh, Willie Bryan. Right. Yes, yeah, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Bryan. Willie Bryan. Uh, that, that, that was crazy when I had to meet uh, Leonard. That was yeah. a, a crazy yeah. thing. That story, me and Bayard, ooh, that was his thing. He was working in Hollywood at the Rainbow Studio. Mm -hmm. And I had to deliver a package for a PCOs, it was right across the street. They got, they got the shows, just to deliver these packages over here. Come it's late, it's late, I'm running with these packages, I'm running up. And upstairs, Leonard Reed had this big production. Now, Leonard Reed is a, a producer. He not only was a Bavillian, a great dancer, but he produced shows. I mean, with chorus lines and dancers and singers and band, putting shows together like so, and for many years at the Apollo. At, that's right, the Apollo yeah. Cotton Club, yes. He goes in, I run upstairs and, and get these packages, and there is a bunch of chorus girls and guys and the band on the side, and he's yelling at people, we got that, and we got that time, we got that sound right. And I go, wow, this guy's, he's, he's, he's serious. So I put, you, I go, yes. He said, you're late. I said, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm, I'm delivering you the, the package. I said, yeah, put them down right there. I said, what? Put them down right there. I said, OK. I put them down. So I, I see you guys have a nice day. Where are you going? I'm going up. No, get in line. You're late. <laughs> sir, well, I think you've got this. Mr. Don't talk. Just get in line. You're late. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, oh. And then, one of the chorus girls and the people I had to sit in with the chorus, I said, just don't argue with him. Just, just do it. <laughs> I said, okay. So I get next to him, I'm sitting down like this. How you doing? Hi, hi. <laughs> and he's walking down like a general. You got to sound right. And we're gonna take it from the top. I'm going like, 
And he's up, da -da 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 -da, and the whole chorus starts singing. And it, 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 wait, 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 I got to, you got me remembering, wait, wait. It's the Harlem Express coming your way. Look out, look out, look out, they're singing all this stuff. And I'm going like, well, that's pretty good. I'm just looking at it, yeah, this is good. Then he says, stop, you. I said, what? You're not singing. Well, I'm sorry, but, but I didn't know. I don't care. Take it from the top. And I said, oh, shoot. I said, da 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 Look out. Look out. Look out. Stop! You! What? what? Sing! Sing! I said, I don't know the word. The guy said, don't say nothing. Just mouth. I said, okay. I said, okay. I got it. Just, I got it. I got it. Everybody else is singing, I'm going. Then <laughs> he said, hey! Okay. I said, I can't do that. <laughs> and everybody, now we move to the next stage, I'm going. He said, now we're going to do choreography, I said. Choreography? <laughs> I don't know. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> they're singing and dancing and they're kicking. I'm in the middle. Oh, <laughs> then he said, he said, you. I said, I said, it stops now. It stops now. I don't know the words. I don't know the steps. I don't know you know what the hell this, this show is about. But this has been nice. And I am leaving, and it's been an experience. <laughs> Thank you. I'm walking backwards. Yeah, he just looked at me like this. Tomorrow at 8. <laughs> that's all he said. <laughs> and that's how I met Little <laughs> Green. And then he did. He called me up and made me come there. And that's how we became friends. And uh. he showed me different stuff. Of uh, the Rainbow mm -hmm. Studios in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was crazy. Yeah. He was a man. But he got things done. But we became good friends, and he was showing me how to break musical phrases down in the bars and, and work with chorus line and, and do figurations and like Zigfield Follies and stuff. So, yeah. Just for you to know, when you talked about Capicio, which was the most famous like tap shoe place in New York, so he was delivering tap shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the yeah. shoes that they had. Yeah. We had great companies that made great dance shoes for us and stuff. Mm. But that, yeah. that was my crazy experience with yeah. him. And, yeah, and yeah we met him when he yeah. was 97. Whoa! Yeah, just was about six weeks before he passed away. Wow! And it was, we were in LA, and we were flying back home, and then Rusty, who worked yeah, with uh, Leonard Grace. a lot. So we saw Leonard before already, but we never really had a chance to talk Didn't to really him. sit down and talk to yeah. him. Yeah. He's talking about experience. He, oh. His memory is like, Phenomenal. He, uh, we, we were Google, a, Google is weak against it's, Leonard Reed. It's just, it's <laughs> he just, was the living Google. He could remember, you know, age 97, <laughs> yeah. he remembered what day, who, which performers, like, which I, number I did, to which song, were. which clothes they were wearing. He knew every lyrics of every song you could imagine. <laughs> it was like absolutely yeah. crazy. He, he was the one that told Warren Berry. Warren Berry said, well, we came here. You did not come out on that thing. You had a burgundy shirt, and your brother had this, and the other thing, the other brother. I said, whoa! Look at and the song was called da 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 I said, my God, this guy would, yeah. his mind was just sharp. Yeah. And he was that. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we did the interview with him in 90, when he was 97, yeah. and then we flew back to Germany, and then I think six weeks later or something, he passed away. Oh, you got a valuable interview. Yeah. You got a valuable interview. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Rusty puts part of it on her, on her video, That's and he good. did the uh, Shim Shim, because afterwards Leonard did the uh, Revenge of the Shim Shim, yes. and the Return of the Shim Shim. The end of the Shim Shim. So the they're return. not really known in the scene, but uh, he tried to yeah, create and, and follow-up scenes. That's the yeah. thing I see around, you know, when we talk about, uh, uh, some of the swing scenes places. They said, let's do the shim sham. I go, okay. I said, but you guys are not saying the whole thing. You got to say the whole thing. Shim, sham, shimmy. shimmy. Say shim, sham, shimmy. 
you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and then, did he tell you about the second step, the break? The, 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 yeah. the, a lot of dancers don't know that. It was mm -hmm. changed after he, um, uh, what's the guy? After, got, before, that's how the name became Chim Cham, because mm -hmm. the original name was Goofus, mm -hmm. and then it was changed because um, uh, these guys tried to steal the dance, the dance from him. And he saw a group of people dancers doing it, and he said, and we said, well, look, they're doing our dance. Yeah, that's Goofus. He said, well, you guys learned that. Oh, this ain't Goofus. This is called the Shim Sham. Shim Sham. Where's this place? Uh, show me where. And they went there, and it was the, the uh, uh, club, like the Shim Sham Club. And the group that did it was the three little words. They were the, they were the dance team. And until they walked in the room, and they said, OK, he said, everything's correct except that one step. <laughs> And that was to push it and you push it and you cross over it, you push it and you, it, yeah, it's on the one. I said, Leonard, how, do you, how did it become from eight to one? He said, because of my first wife. I said, oh. He said, every time you hit that break, da ba dee da ba dee da 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 Her name was Anna Brown. I said, oh. OK, so he said, so when you hit that break, ending on seven, that breath, you say Anna, and that's how you, that's how you remember it. You know, you know, the push it, you guys do the shim sham, you know, you got, and push it, and push you, and you cross over, and push it, and okay. Before you go into that, you go, shabba doo, da ba dee da 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 that's Anna Brown, Anna Brown, that's it. So that's on the one, it's not, nowadays we go, Anna one, da ba dee da 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 That's what's changed because of the three little words. Mm -hmm. They were the ones to change that rhythm, but that, uh, but originally it's eight, a one, two, three, four, a five, six, and a five, and you push, do, 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 do. And I said, well, Leonard, you can't say that now. Why? This is your new wife. He said, you know what? You're right. He said, Barbary. <laughs> <laughs> Barbary. I so, did. so you mean every section of the Shim Shem is one wife, and then he yeah. did the, <laughs> And after he got his fifth one, well, he got I, the return I, of the Shim Shem with new steps. New steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a fun step. Yeah, you can see that. Um, <clears throat> I think on YouTube. Yeah, you can see it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The last performance of literally at mm -hmm. the Orpheum Theater. You yeah. can see the difference. Yeah. Yeah, and Rusty he also did. yeah he also told us about the half break step actually. Oh, gee, but you got yeah, do, do, where it came do, from? Did, 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 did he tell about the military? Or which one did he tell you? No, he talked about the bugle call rack. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And he said the bugle call rack was such a common thing and a famous song, and so they did just a step that fit the phrasing of the bugle call rack. That's right. Yeah, and it's so nice. He talked also about the tachyani. <laughs> because a lot of people said, oh, everyone's talking now about this chorus girl called Annie, yeah, Annie no, which I, is completely no, not I right. I never heard about that. Yeah. I never heard about that. Yeah, but it was, I remember when we started dancing and learning mm -hmm. the Shim Shem, mm -hmm. this is also what we heard. Yeah, Techie Annie is from a chorus girl that was called Annie. Yeah. And you know the name of the guy who did the step, actually? I forgot it. I have to look on the video. Uh, hey, was it, uh, there, was, uh, there was this fellow who was on stage, and he did the step. And his girlfriend was called Annie, mm -hmm. and she was in the audience. Mm -hmm. And he did the step, and he said, hey, this step is just for you, Annie. It looks uh -huh. a little bit taggy, but it's uh -huh. just for you. For her. Yes, and right. then he did the step, and he asked her, OK, you tell me when I should pull it. Yeah. And he said, shall I pull it now? And everyone, no, shall I pull it now? Yeah. No, and it should be, yeah. And then he went to the break step. And this yes, is why it's called the Tacky Annie. Tacky Annie. And but I forgot the name of him. Uh, it's the same guy that did the, 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 the Atkins? Might be. It could, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Did the cross yeah. Roy Atkins. Yeah. Do, 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 I have to look up do, do, on the video do, do, do. that recorded. And it's also um, uh, a, a terminology uh, word when you say tack it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when uh, you know, like guys go to rave clubs and hip hop, you're doing the hip hop and you're doing the locking and, and you're doing a step real good. I said, wow, you're really getting down. Oh, that is great. Oh, this is hip. And they say, oh, get down. Oh, man, you, you killed it. You nailed that one. And in those days, you said, oh, man, you tacked that one. I mean, you nailed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you tack it. Tack. <laughs> that means. Yeah.
when I was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that. So Chester, um, you talked a lot about the tap dancers now, mm -hmm. which was where you got started and got into the yeah, jazz scene, mm -hmm. jazz music scene. Mm -hmm. So how did you discover the Lindy Hop? Lindy Hop, during that period of time, um, I met Norma in 76, yes, on 76. I was a filmmaker, you know, I st still was filmmaking and doing my research. But before that, I was, you know, like I said, I was doing it. And somebody during that period of time with the tap dancers, I met a lot of dancers. Like I learned uh, Afro Cuban with um, uh, uh, Carlos Fouché. I learned with Captain Dunham. I did get a chance to go to St. Louis and work with her. I worked with Captain Dunham. And there was a gentleman in there, but he did Afro-American dances and stuff, but he did the thing called the Lindy. And I was going, that's pretty good. Look at the gentleman to me. He said, oh, now come over here. His name was Archie Savage. And he was my first Lindy Hop teacher. So I said, wow. He said, my partner was Maria Bryan. And let me show you the step. And he started showing me these different jazz movements um, out of the, uh, the I said, it's almost like tap that he said, but they're both were marriage. They were got nowadays people separate the tap dancing from the but they were both. They were they're all involved. It's all jazz. You know. Then and um, when I talk about uh, um oh well contemporary jazz dances, you know, pot of beret, pot of beret and stuff. There was the system bar steps and the half like you said, the half breaks and stuff. Those are steps that was taken but they made it more modern for the contemporary dancing. Yeah, it was Archie who was the one with my Lindy Hop and the jazz idiom I portray is Maria Bryan. Then another lady I worked with was uh, Nancy Nolan. She was another good, great jazz dancer that I worked with her. That, I, I worked with her when I was just getting into the college thing and they wanted me to do um, choreography. You know, I said, I, can't, I said, I could choreograph some things. They said, we go get me a degree in choreography. But at this time, I was taking lessons from all these different people. I got out of the class. They kicked, well, they really kicked me out of the class. <laughs> they, 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 I was making about eight dances a day, <laughs> just creating ballet, <clears throat> tap, jazz. They said, you don't need this class. Just get out. They just kicked me out. But it was a two and a half year course. You have to do three production numbers of, of your own, and you have to have research on certain papers and stuff, and then come up with the uh, synopsis of notation, dance notation. And I said, and at that time, they had tap, but there was not too many books on tap terminology. So I created one, I did the notation, and when I turned it in, they saw that. Then I was asking questions to the teachers, and they couldn't answer me back to me. I said, how many, I said, how many steps is going to take uh, if it's 30 feet and how many bars of mesh is going at the rate of speed of 80 beats a minute? They said, huh? I said, that's width versus time going there. So tell me what step would that be? They said, <laughs> they said, get out. So they kicked me out. And when did you meet Frankie? Frankie, I met uh, later. I met Norma earlier. I met Frankie because of Rob, Rob mm -hmm. here. Rob was the one that got me into, I was doing, I had my company then. My company was doing tap, jazz, ballet, all, this, all the different stuff. Uh, that was, that was near, that was in the 70s, God, that was around the 70s. That was when Rob came to town and he met the Inner City Culture Center. That was the same building that I met Fayard. Mm -hmm. And he thought, and he went upstairs and saw me in a stage play. I'm choreographing this. He said, wow. And he's looking at the steps. Wait a minute. That's the so-and-so step. Then we talked. And he showed me here. I said, yeah. And we became real good friends. I remember he was going to do a Lindy class in L.A. But it was so much conflict they had. So he moved to Santa Barbara. Then he had this big show he was going to do. And I said, just let me know. I'm going to come support you. I said, sure. Then he called me up. I don't have a band. I said, what you mean? I need to get a band. I said, what, day, what night is it? I said, you'll have a band there. I'll be there. I need an MC. <laughs> I'll get you an MC. Just, you'll have an MC. He said, oh my God, I need a... It'll be there. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get there. He had no idea. 
So <clears throat> I tapped my whole orchestra down there. And, and then I said, who do you have on the show? And I looked and said, I know this guy. And it was, it was Chaz, it was uh, Frankie, and the uh, Rhythm Hot Shots. Yeah. They were there. And that was the first time. And that was the first time Leonard saw me. Mm -hmm. He said, what? And I was up there MC, hey, oh, ladies and gentlemen, blah, 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 telling jokes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, man, let's get it. Boom. Da, 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 And he said, one of them, that's how we, we hooked up. You and mean we, Frankie, huh? That's what Frankie, yeah. well, Frankie would laugh, because yeah. he started saying, he said, who did you know? And I'm telling people that were still in Los Angeles. Yeah. He freaked out. <laughs> Wait a minute. <clears throat> so and so's still alive. I said, he's still alive. <clears throat> During that time period, a lot of the dancers, Split up, then they never seen each other in 30 years. You know, we had groups like the, the Rockets, the Bomb Bombs. These are the dancers you see in those films like Stormy Weather or Cabin in the Sky or, you know, different. They, these all, there were a lot of groups like Lindy groups here and, and the eccentric groups here, comedic groups here, cabaret here, tap dancers here. They were all over. And you, you, you performed in a circuit. So you met each other. If it wasn't in this mm -hmm. town, you met in another town, mm -hmm. in different people. Mm -hmm. And so he, 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 I said, well, I'm, I'm gonna stay in touch. Not knowing I was gonna meet him, I think I met him, that was about approximately four years mm -hmm. after we did a tour, and I had to stay in New York City. And I was walking to New York City, and I heard this jazz in a club, and I walked downstairs, it was called the Cat Club, and that's where Frankie, Norma, and all of them were there. Yeah, but, but I met Norma first on the television set. She was doing Sanford and Son and Richard Pryor's show. And that's what we met. Mm. And she said, and then she started saying, no, no, you're gonna do the stuff like that. This was the funny thing. You know how Norma is? <laughs> Norma, no, you're not doing that stuff right. A lot of dancers, a lot of dancers get- So the female Leonard. <laughs> now, the, 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 this is gonna this is gonna blow your mind. I had to. I sat home one day and I said, I drew a little things, just like writing all my instructors down, and I wrote this little circle. I said, okay. I said, okay. Norma's like this. Right. And you gotta understand when an instructor is on you, that don't mean they don't like you. They do like you because any instructor that's going to stay on you and say, that means they have an interest in saying, I want to see you do this thing right. It's the ones that go, okay, you got to step, okay, goodbye, and walk away. Those are the ones you get scared of. <laughs> because they don't, you got it, you got it, if you don't, they just let you, they just let you go. You got to find your way. But if you got somebody say, no, we're going to do this again, S sit down and do it again. They want to make sure it's burnt inside of you. So it took me a while to understand that. Norma was a complete jazz dancer as well as a Lindy Hop dancer. Okay? And I said, my oh, God, this, this woman is just a stricter. Then I said, Who's, who was your instructor? It was Leonard Reed. Leonard took Norma out because he didn't have a chorus girl and he got in a fight. And he said, I could take any one of these girls to make them something. He said, can you do a time step? She said, yeah, sure. She, you're in. And, but she almost got him in trouble because she was too young, you know. And she was under the age, and it was about to go on a tour. And the, the, the organization said, oh, she's too young, and almost shut the whole show down. And that's why I said, Leonard, you know, no, oh, that girl woman almost got my, my show destroyed. <laughs> I mean, they're good friends, but, yeah, but, but and, 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 I, and I noticed when I watched Leonard, no, you gotta do this, right? And I said, okay, now I see where she gets back from. It drops to that, and it drops back over where I'm at, but then I met Archie Savage, now ready? Archie, where you learn Lindy from? Norma Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Complete circle. My brain was like this. <laughs> I was it. Okay. Yeah, because out of the three hardest teachers, I mean, I met a lot of teachers and they were great, and I learned a lot. But the three in, in order would have been John Bubbles first. I mean, no, no, not, not, no, third. He would have been third. 
No, I'm a second and then Leonard first. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> uh, yeah, we met uh, actually Rob in 92 the first time. Oh! Yeah, because we went in 89 to Harang for the first time. Uh -huh. And, oh, sorry, no, 91, my mistake. Uh, so it was 89, we met the Swedes. There was a boogie-woogie competition here uh -huh. in close to Munich, uh -huh. and there were a bus of Swedes who came and joined the comp competition. Uh -huh. And they danced like Lindy Hop. Uh -huh. We didn't know the name Lindy Hop at this time, uh -huh. but we knew the old clips, because Hells of Popping was running frequently on TV. So everyone knew this stuff, and then say, look, look they, they look like in the movies. Uh -huh. you, and then we, and we talked to them. They were not very good at this time because mm -hmm. just in the summer of 89, Frankie was the first time in Harang. Oh, exactly. So they just learned all this stuff very freshly from Frankie and mm -hmm. they used all these steps in the competition. And then we talked to them and we went to the Oktoberfest and then they asked me if oh, I know right. this clip from, you know, Helsa Papin and yeah. said, oh, the guy who pulls the girl around. Said, oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, he's just taught in Sweden. And you guys, what he was here? Ah, yeah, <laughs> and I remember when I started dancing, we looked, looked at many of the old video clips, like the 50s with, uh, with Bill Haley Bill and the Comets, the and then the Lindy Hop stuff yeah. from, from Helsa Poppen and other clips. And I always said, wow, it would be so great to have these dancers and learn from them. That was good. Yeah. That was a good era. That was, that was <clears throat> the retro uh, resurgence of swing, you guys. Mm -hmm. But you guys, what we're talking about is how swing is, is what we what you are having right now. It's right around that 80s, from the 80s and going into the 90s. Uh, the, this gentleman here is, is a, a pinpoint, I call tell people that pinpoint, that meaning that was helped put, perpetuated the art form that's where it is all over the world right now. You know, uh, the, the Swedes, Marcus, we have London, we have a, a series of people that really started it off, and pinpointed it, and just started the, the, to flourish. It, it would have been just laying sleep if it wasn't for them researching, pulling it back out, and getting it back into the mainstream of, of the art form. You know, uh, and, and you know, you know who's taking dance lessons with me right now? You want? You got to crack up. Before Frankie, remember it was Al Mims. Okay, I have Al Mims' son. Oh. I'm TV's in my car. And he's learning all his dad stuff. And I told him, I said, oh no, you need to know what your dad did in the Lindy scene. And then when they broke up from the Lindy scene into the jazz scene, because they would go to clubs to clubs in Europe and in the States, mm -hmm. the Playboy clubs and, and the stuff. And I said, so he's now, we're putting together all of Al Milne's stuff, mm -hmm. all his stuff, techniques and stuff. So I want to have, have two more questions mm -hmm. and then maybe you can catch something from the audience. Okay. Um, one question is, when you think about uh, now all the jazz dancers, tap dancing, mm -hmm. Lindy Hop, and so on, if you, if you see them, if you dance them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they're different than other dancers. Mm -hmm. But can you describe maybe if somebody who has never seen the dancers, what, what makes them special? Or what is like different when you think about tap dancing, Lindy dancing, and whatever, salsa or tango? Okay. Uh, just a dance, just a dance. Just a dance, just a dance now. The dancer itself, you guys got to realize, music and the dance is a tool. And it's, it's a harness tool, it can go into anybody. But what you do to it, what you put into it, is the thing. It's a tool that is free. When I talk about vernacular jazz dancing, I'm, I'm talking about, I mean, all of it, even like you said, tango and all this, it's, 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 it's a passion, it's in you and it's there to tell a story. Only you can tell that story. And, it's, and this is a tool that makes you, you can utilize to come on that, that dance floor. I've seen a lot of great dancers, even in the hip hop. Uh, they look very good, they got a lot of energy, but they're lacking one thing, they're lacking the style because they have not been taught the style or understand. They only taught one way, full of energy, acrobatics, the whole thing. The tap dancers, speed and how many, how many beats they can get in, taps they can get in there. I'm, I said, that's Genesis world record. I'm not going for that. I'm going for what I can communicate to the people. And it's, it's this thing. When you see the dancers from a long time ago, they were all completely different, but they were special. 
Why? Because they lived that time of their life. That was their life. That's they're doing they're doing the same steps we're doing here. That's what makes these dancers different from these dancers. When you learn a step in a classroom from these these your instructors and stuff, learn it. You know, of course, learn it well, learn it correctly. Take your time to get it. But when you start to dance it, to sit back and realize it's going to be you that's going to execute it. So put that energy, you know, because you learn how to express it. And a good dancer, uh, you could it, it sticks out on a on a on a dance floor. You could your eye just go like this, because it's not just the dance steps, but they're telling the story and it's hitting you. You know, we I had a conversation about that with uh, the orchestra, and we call a thing called the zone. In the ballroom, we'd be dancing, the band would be playing. And then a, a, dance, a, a musician might see a dancer and do a step and go, oh, that is a good step. And he might improvise off that dancer the same way you could be dancing. You hear a great soloist that means listen to the music and say, oh, I can do this step. You learned the step originally, but you could do it 12 different, different type of ways. But it's how you feel when you hear it a beat of a drum or the, the, the or a saxophone or a trumpet player playing. And that's what makes you move back. That's a conversation between the, um, the dancer and the musician. Mm -hmm. a, a special dancer is one that is listening to musicality as well as technique and watch his partner when they're on the floor. <clears throat> a tap dancer should be able to know it's not really how many taps it is. You put the beats in where it's needed. Was, and that's going to give the great, the best effect, you know. And that's the setup, you know. And then you have the realm of a dancer knowing when to contract to bring it in, and to, to bring it back out, make it bigger, make it bigger than it, it is. You know. Well, I have an idea now. Actually, we could do this next year. You know, like we have the T-shirt and the CD, <laughs> and we make a new product for next year. We ask all the teachers to record yelling on students. So, yeah, do it again, one more time. And then we can sell this. <laughs> again! <laughs> again! <laughs> again! <laughs> that, that remind me <clears throat> what the Frenchie said. Yeah. We did this dance step, and later the Frenchie, they used to sit down there and watch it. That, that was, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of experience, yeah. like learning how to dance it without counting. It's the, mm -hmm. He said, okay, you got to do this step. And just at the end of the show, I want you to man out it. So I'm working on this step. And then they're standing in the balcony like up there and we're down here dancing. Dun, dun, dun. It's the finale of the show. Dun, 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 dun. Bam! Applause. And then the, the, they look up at their, we see, if we, oh, we got their approval. And he gives the band a nod. They say, encore. Da, 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 da. We have to do that last part again. Da, 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 da. Flips and everything. Da, da, da. Ah. Applaud. We look up. Band goes. After the 15th time, <laughs> we're going like this. He's, what, what's, what, what's up? You gotta do it till you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I see. So the last short, we have to answer in one minute. Okay. Because Rob told me once a story about that uh, they had to do a show on TV which was broadcasted on satellite around the world. And apparently you did choreography because Rob was dancing in the group there. <laughs> And then, you know, they were on stage, the curtain was ready to go open, and Chester runs in, you know, we changed this part here and this part there. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> we had about at least 50 seconds before the curtain was going to go. So much time. Oh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it was... Uh, the soul of American music. It was the first time we had Dick Clark, you know, Dick Clark, the king of the rock and roll, da, 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 had him there. We had Barry Gordy from Motown there, all the, you know, precious night, huh? you know. And they had Lionel Hampton, and then, and Little Richard, and the band was killing it. And so, the band, 
And I'm looking at this. Okay, we're doing this step. And we're going to get it up. And Rob is ready. And, and the post goes boom. Dun, 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 dun. The intro. Then the curtains go. Dun, 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 dun. I said, that step is not going to work. <laughs> and I said, no, stop, 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 stop. But it's too late. Cameras are on. The audience is. Da, 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 da. You know how the party gets right here? Yeah. No, don't go this way. I want you to lift her and go this way. And guys, you got to spin back here. Come on up. Come on, we're rehearsing like this. 20 seconds. <laughs> then the band is playing. And then when they hit that downbeat, they go. And I did it. Practice once. Boom. That's back to one. I ran off. And then he said. I'll find that tape. I will find it. I will find that tape. And then when the sweat was on, but they did it. They, they, they got the changes. They got the changes. I said, yeah, that was good. That was good. And he just gave me a look like this. <laughs> I said, y'all did fine. Great, great. Mwah. <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the soul of American music. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> So, we Did have a few minutes left. You, Ryan Francois? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe one or two questions. Yeah. Yeah, outside of the many professions you already worked in, was there any other career that could have been for you? I don't know. I'm still trying to find it. <laughs> for real, I'm just, I see someone say, that's interesting. Let me try that. And I'll go out and just try it and see if it you know, now like I said, one thing, I, one thing about the world of dance that I learned uh, from anything, I, the filmmaking really helped me out because I, as a filmmaker you explore different things and you can go into it. But I had to step outside my boundaries. I said, I always liked watching dancers, but I never did think of myself as, as a, you know, as a dancer. <laughs> you know, just, just do it. And then when I saw, I could spin. Or I could say, hey, I'm, I'm catching on to this. It's pretty good. Hmm. Maybe I could, it might be something else. And then my hobby as a dancer excelled what I wanted to be <laughs> quicker. But now it's getting back to filmmaking. It's getting back to it because I will be working on a, a, a film. I'm going to be working on a movie called Jitterbug. Mm. Yes. It's good. It, it, and it's going to have a storyline. And we'll hopefully shoot here. Storyline? This is... This is really unusual nowadays. I know. I know. <laughs> Let's throw the movie. Let's throw the movie together. They don't care. You need special effects and no, explosion and shooting, no, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I told yeah. I told the producer, the director, he came, mm. I think yeah, last year to Europe. He came to Sweden, a different place. And I told him about the camp. Yeah, mm -hmm. I told him about mm -hmm. all. I said, no, there's dancers around, and it's supposed to have a great story. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like the bridge between the hip hop into the, the swing. So, so. Just a funny to the side, for me it's always really funny in America when you turn on the TV. Mm -hmm. Because you turn on the channel, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, oh, bam, yeah. bam. Next one, ah, pa, 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 yeah. kip. Next one, cut the hand off. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's okay. all you get. <laughs> it's all cool, it's all cool. And then you get a nipple. Whoa, oh, oh, the world is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, too, too, it's too, too shocking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this world's gone crazy. Yep. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, how much do you feel Lindy Hop evolved over the years, in your perspective? Are we dancing in different dance, or is it something the same, just from your perspective? Uh, you mean from the years of when it came back, like in the 80s? Yeah, rather right from when it came back till now. Do you feel a significant difference? Do you notice it? Yeah, I do see some difference in a little bit. I think we're at a time period where it's kind of wavering. Okay? And the only reason it's wavering is because, um, um, okay, we, had, we, we were fortunate to have a lot of the, the, the great masters that, that was there watching us and making sure of them. Now we, I don't know if you've seen, there was a show called Frankie 100, have you seen that? Have you ever seen that? Oh, you need to look at this. Okay, so this is why it's important, and I'm glad that Marcus has got this camp, because a lot of you are new. This is the next generation. This is the good generation. So now you get a chance to really soak in the people that are gonna give you the root of stuff. Because there's a wavering time when we have some instructors that are out there, out there, and they're doing it, but it's not, it's not the authentic thing. Now, don't get me wrong when I say uh, uh, I'm all for innovation. I'm all for 
things that is always going to progress. I'm always. But when you progress, you have to have something that has a foundation. Because if you go too far away, it gets unstable and it falls apart. Do you understand what I mean? So you've got to have something. You can go innovation, but it has to have some kind of substance underneath it. And it, by you learning this history, it's going to give you more stability and stuff. I've seen a lot. Uh, when we did Frankie 100, there's a thing I wrote in the show. And they said, why do you want to do this show? I said, because look at all the great masters we have here. How long are they going to be here? We need to get them, uh, the next generation, to understand that. So I, I pinpointed all the people that I knew from each country that are doing that. And they demonstrated it on, on that, that show. And that was a good platform because it was a whole, over 100 years of swing. Maybe just to explain, Frankie 100 was a show that Chester put together in the Apollo Theater. And it was actually twice. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a two hour show almost, yeah. that kind of. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of, of the original dancers in there and many of the dancers from around the world, like we have been in there too, and some other in the Swedes and everyone there and people mm -hmm. from England. Yeah. So it was an amazing experience there. It was fun. I mean, you, got, you had the <clears> old and the new, finally with the connection there. And, that's how, and I said, rolled in there, if you're going to endure into this art form or get into it, get to one of these people now that are around to get to the source. You want to get to the source, the closest that you can. And that's going to help you move into the next thing. Did that did help you? What? Yeah, thank you. Okay, no problem. So, last question. Yes. Um, I saw that you were like a master, a smart master, and stuff like that. Uh, do you ever purchase other lights in your dance? Do they help you as a better dancer? Oh, when I was working with these different the masters? No, the martial arts. Martial arts, huh? Oh, the, mar oh, the yeah. martial arts. Oh, I thought you were the dancing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. The same period of time I was doing that almost the same time as dance. My martial arts was, I was about 12. And I have learned from the, the old original guy. My martial arts first instructor was uh, Gichi Yamaguchi from Okinawa. You heard of Okinawa, you heard of Gojuru? Go, the Gojuru is hard, soft, meaning yin and yang, the uh, transitions from Chinese to Japanese, yin and yang. And to me, the martial arts is, 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 is movement and is uh, transferring the energy. When I do Lindy Hop, it's the same <laughs> principle, but nobody knows it. When I look at Lindy Hop and I see that, I go, oh, that's a good move. That's a good self-defense move. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's good. When I look at martial arts, I go, oh, that's a good Lindy Hop mm -hmm. move. I like that, <laughs> you know? But, but, it, but it has, and, it's, and the principles of it's the same. My other style is from Korea. It's the art of coordinating power transferring. So in one of the classes we did today, I said, well, we lead and follow. What are we doing? I'm giving a signal to my partner without saying a word. She knows the structure, her framework. It's the same thing in martial arts. I can move this way, I can move this way. She can feel it and go any direction you want. Pass it, she can move on and make it flow. Everything, it's the, it's the, it's the same thing. You know, when I do a self-defense, a movement, a punch going this way, I just go like this, brush my hair. And it goes it go, it go this way, I say, oh, let's go next. Mm -hmm. Bop, keep moving. <laughs> I got no time. Mm. I'm a lazy fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I always find the best way yeah. to get out of it. It's interesting because it brought some memories back. Yeah, uh, because, you know, remember, yeah. You know, but no, when, when you said about, you know, starting to dance, uh, because when I started to dance, I was like 18, and I liked watching dancing, but you could not get me on the floor. I you was so shy. No. I was so it's shy. Marcus. Yes, yes, yes. No, I would you not go. I, I refused. You were not a wallflower. Yeah, but on, on, the, on a, any party, a, a wedding or something, you couldn't get me on the floor. And it was my mother who gave me a birthday present to my 18th birthday, a dance class at a dance studio. And she, she got you out there? I didn't want to go. <laughs> so, but she was, she was funny because she asked my best friend if he would go with me. And he said, yeah, I did dancing. He said, were you dancing? He said, yeah, when I was 14, it was fun. Yeah, I would go too. What? So, 
one side I want it, but of course with 18 puberty, you say no. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally I went there and we had a group of people we knew, we met there, and this is how everything started. But before, actually also with, I think, 16 I was, I did martial arts, Taekwondo. See? See and before I went to martial arts, I was unsporty like hell. I could not do one push-up. Oh, and yeah, my, yes, yeah, yeah, and my yeah. flexibility was kind of here. <laughs> this was how far I could go down. And for me, I have to say, martial art changed pretty much everything. The two years, two and a half years I did it there, yes. um, because you got the flexi flexi flexibility, flex yeah, the body awareness, control. Yes. And I feel a lot that this helped me later in the dancing tremendously. Def definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So this was, and I remember another thing. Remember in Harang, because Chester taught in Harang, and normally Chester, when he teaches, he does the same way he's thinking. This is how he creates his routines. So you go, yeah, here and here and over there, and there's this there, and then you do this and here and go over there, and he has a round. And I forgot the name of the fellow, but remember, we recreated your routine that you taught in the class as a martial arts routine. Oh, oh, oh. Do you remember oh, it? Oh, oh, oh. When we stand, okay, yeah, go, kick, poo, yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so we used, we used his routine that he taught in the couple class and turned it into a martial arts part. <laughs> I completely I forgot about I it. I at it like, wow, where's this come from? I have to ask them yeah, if oh. they still have the video somewhere. Oh, yeah, we got to get that. We got to get that. Definitely. Okay, did you have a question, sir? No? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Is Stefan um, there? Stefan knows a little bit Stefan. probably more about the dancers. Um, yes, I know. Uh -huh. oh, I expect it. Yeah. He's here. He's in the house. Yeah. Yes, Stefan. But here. Uh, he he knows yeah. all yeah. stuff, even from from the European all the way to America, <laughs> and he could tell you this is that. He told me something that was very interesting mm -hmm. about the, the place here. What's what's that, Stefan? Oh, mm -hmm. right here. No, you can, no, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, give a round of applause. You have a medical split before you leave. Yes. Kickball change. Yes. That's something sexual. Kickball change, kickball split. You do, lovely. Something quite interesting in this room, in 1925 there was the first all black cast orchestra coming to Europe, bringing black jazz to Europe, coming through London and Paris to Berlin and Munich, and they were performing in this room. It was Sam Wooding and his Chocolate Kiddies. Yeah. So the very first American all black jazz band was performing in this room in 1925. They were on this stage. Yeah. Probably, probably not this one because this is new. Okay. Well, <laughs> the, 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 the portal is still the yeah. original. Yeah. And every time I'm DJing in this room, on the back I'm maybe, on the back part, yeah. Like Sam Wooding has been here. I'm in his footsteps. And of course, tonight when I'm DJing, I will play at least one song, maybe the Black Bottom, must be Georgia Brown, by Sam Wooding in his orchestra. So when you hear something that sounds a little scratchy and very old-fashioned, that's somebody that's historical it has to do with this room. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a little fast, because mm -hmm. in the 20s people were dancing yes, we very do. fast. Yes. We should teach them Music right was very yeah. fast, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. just to explain, you, you were doing just a one step on mm -hmm. a swing walk or mm -hmm. some Charleston mm -hmm. moves. Mm -hmm. uh, couple dancing was not mm -hmm. as sophisticated as nowadays. Mm -hmm. So in the 20s it was more a fun party. So you could do much more freestyle than we do with our... But it was interesting just to say, because you had the one step, because when we yes. talked to Norma and she yeah. said, you know, most people when they went dancing was their loved ones. They yeah. were not dancing Lindy or something, no. they did the one step, because it was easy and they walked yeah. over the floor and... Yeah. Yeah. And here in Europe in the 20s and 30s, the newest dance to do, very convenient for everybody, young people and old people, was Foxtrot. And Foxtrot is very easy because it's half tempo. You have a slow, slow, quick, quick. 
And by boy, you have quick, quick, hold step, quick, quick, hold step. Hold step is slow, slow, quick, quick. Very easy, and it's compatible to, to Balboa. So when I do Balboa and I feel exhausted, I do some foxtrot in between, and I'm all relaxed. It's like doing halftime Lindy all of a sudden. <laughs> so people help themselves to, to be com comfortable. So yeah, yeah. Good. Always help mm -hmm. yourself to be comfortable. When the music is fast, just do it in a comfortable mm -hmm. way. Don't try mm -hmm. to put in some, some sophisticated moves just because you learn them in a workshop. Mm -hmm. Just let the music inspire you how to dance. Through. That's easy. Uh, just to add a little bit, because you wanted to be at, uh, interested in the dancing also, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not aware of a lot of footage or something from this area, from people dancing. You hear sometimes, we, we did interviews of some of the, um, the Berlin Swing or Hamburg Swing Kids. They were the people who know from the Swing Kids movie. Mm. Uh, they were portrayed there. The movie has a lot of mistakes in it, and most things are not true. It's Disney made them. This is why the movie was only running one week in, in the cinemas here, because the critics were so terrible that none of the movies took them, because they were, the problem was not about the dancing, but about all the, the history, about how the people were treated and what happened. There were so many mistakes in it, and they had the people on set, but Disney didn't listen to them. So this is why it failed kind of here. It's only among the swing dancers that know mm -hmm. this clip for the swing dancing part. And, but like this in the movie, people didn't dance. So yeah. this is completely different. And we talked to some of them, and most of these like swing kids, they were just dressing up, they were having the music, but they didn't dance. And so probably most people danced foxtrot kind of to it. And maybe it were like one or two people that maybe, well, maybe, maybe went over there. Maybe 10 years ago, uh, yeah. the chance to be the DJ for the 90th birthday of a swing kid from Berlin. Yes. And he asked every, every female that had a skirt on, no, not in pants, but with a skirt, to dance. <clears throat> or she was nine years old or 90 years old. He danced every lady in this room. And he was doing a fantastic swing walk, a swing foxtrot, mm -hmm. with the most fancy moves you can imagine. He was running like crazy over the, the floor. And it was kind of one step, and all of a sudden there was a little triple. Mm -hmm. And he turned the lady around, and all of a sudden they were running back to back. Ooh, and mm -hmm. he turned her in front and said, oh, that's amazing. And he said, we called it the grizzly in yes, the days. Grizzly. Yep. Even in the 1930s, they called it in Germany, the swing kids called mm -hmm. it the grizzly. Mm -hmm. And that's really amazing because mm -hmm. that's a jazz step. You yes, know what the grizzly yeah, is, yeah, of course. Yeah. And so I always imagine that for dancing, people were more yeah. aware of yeah. the things yeah. that were going on in America then really is translated yeah. nowadays. Um, I have one book at home, it's a long time I listened to it, it was about Boogie Woogie, and they explained a, a few things about what they call the swing or the Boogie Woogie, mm -hmm. and they also talked a little bit about the dancing in there, yeah. but there was no real description and no images and no video, so we still, many question marks in mm -hmm. there. Um, but what I, one thing I realized is because <clears throat> uh, when we now talk a lot about dancing with the Lindy, but when I grew up, we did first what we call now the boogie woogie, which was the mm -hmm. rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think it spread most of the dancing because it was after the war that all the GIs yeah. came. Mm -hmm. And we had in Munich the Funkkaserne, which uh, they had uh, the venues there. We had bouncing in Bavaria. There was a, a place where they played the swing music at this time. And it was, of course, mostly all the GIs who came and did the dance. And I think this was the start when it spread around. And we mm -hmm. met one of the old dancers, and at this time they called themselves more jitterbug dancers, not Lindy Hop dancers, mm -hmm. but jitterbug dancers. It was the more common term here. Okay. And he said, I had to learn the dance because otherwise I would have not seen my girlfriend anymore because she was out dancing with the GIs every day. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, well, it's yeah. quite interesting because yeah. by coincidence on a flea market, I bought the program mm -hmm. in Berlin in February 1952 mm -hmm. of the very first Boogie Woogie Championship in Germany. Yeah. And they called the Jitterbug Dancers. Yes. And they explained that we, the Jitterbugs dance to Boogie Woogie music. Boogie That's why they dance from now on, yeah. from February 1952 on. It's called Boogie Woogie. Mm -hmm. Before it was called the Jitterbug. Yeah. So, and but, it, uh, but, it's, but it still is also same, regional, very, very dancing. different, because yeah, some people yeah. still call it, because it was rock yeah. and roll music, and yeah. people called it later rock and roll, yeah. Yeah. but before it was always called Jitterbug, and yeah. some people in Berlin yeah. called yeah. it Boogie Woogie. Yeah, completely Just, just a short, yeah. short thing is when uh, in, um, you know, the rock and roll dancing was really popular then, 
Yeah, yeah. So it's good for no, you no, to no, know. No, yeah. 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 So when people danced, what they called you didn't hear first. You didn't hear first. Yeah. Listen up. Go ahead. When people called it the rock and roll and yeah. danced the rock and roll competitions mm -hmm. and everything, and then. In the 50s, in the 60s, there was the first revival. In the 70s, there was the second big revival. Yeah. But then on the competitions, the style changed. I think it was from Italy and Switzerland uh, or France. I think France even was it, yeah. mostly. They had these kind of kick steps in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. and this one, they started to have a certain step that the people had to do for the contest. It's now called the Continental or Sprungschritt yeah. of Deutsch. Mm -hmm. And so this is what the competition dancers had to do. So what happened that the style that people danced in the social parts and the people danced on the competition split apart. It was not the same anymore. So in the nightclubs, the old way of dancing survived. We had a lot of nightclubs here in Munich, a lot of places, and this was the competition style. And a lot of these dancers, especially from the German dancers, they were teaching in the nightclubs sometimes, but they danced taught the old style, not the competition style. They danced it sometimes, you know, in, mm. in the places, but it was kind of separated. Wow. And, and it was in the 80s, mid of the 80s, they started to do competitions again in the old style. So the problem was, if you call it rock and roll, at this time, 84, rock and roll was this acrobatic version with the high kicks, and later we call them one body condoms, mm. you know? <laughs> These uh, <laughs> because it's really tight, you know, and, and they did the arrows became higher, you get somersaults down the back and everything. But, but this was the attraction of the time. There was no party, no company feast, no ballroom party from a dance school where they had not rock and roll couples there. This was the thing all the time. Mm. And then this was rock and roll to the public. So the old style, kind of the old rock and roll, mm -hmm. and then when people started to do competitions again, they tried to get a different name for it, oh. so you can separate it again. And it could have been Jitterbug or Boogie Woogie, mm -hmm. and they called it Boogie Woogie. And this is why we call the dance nowadays in the schedule Boogie Woogie. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah. That is it. That is and the last it. thing I wanted to say before, that, actually, that, is that, that yeah. when you look at some of the movies, like from 54, 56, there are quite some German movies, uh, like typical German whatever movies and a lot of played like after the war and there's one thing uh, yeah. I have to look it up but um, I have to look it up anyway people are dancing there the GIs are dancing with the yes. people there and they're all doing eight counts you can see that they're still doing the eight counts there and then when I learned the boogie woogie, like it was 85, 86 kind of, this is when we only did six counts. Mm. So actually the thing we never counted and uh, we still did eight counts on a double spin because you needed two steps more. Yeah. But we didn't have the swing out as an eight count pattern anymore. Oh. And I don't know where it got away. Faster, you know? Yeah. Ah. I, this is when the Swedes were here. Mm -hmm. They showed us the first time the eight count step. I looked at it and said, that's weird. We do it in six, we're faster. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that shows you. That yeah, shows I hope you. it gives you a little bit idea about the thing. Okay. At present, when the Americans came after the war to Europe in general, what, how did the dance look like that they were dancing? Because they came from all over America, so some could be from New York, some could be from Los Angeles. Yes. Um, so, I try to imagine how the dance looked like The thing is, I wasn't there, I can't tell you. <laughs> but, but yeah, this is what people saw. People were everywhere. And the thing is, you know, even Norma and everyone said it, when, when Norma toured around the world mm -hmm. to Australia, she realized suddenly, oh, the boat on the, the, uh, the, boat on the, on the band, the band yeah, on the boat yeah, played, yeah. and it was not on the quality she was used to. And the dancers were not on the quality. So, of course, we always mm -hmm. look on the the best of the dancers. Mm -hmm. We talk about Norma, Frankie, all these people, and they were the best in the world on their field. And if you think about that America is as big as Europe, you can take all the European talent, and this is kind of was matches America. Plus, in America, you had a, a money structure kind of that yeah. even gets these people on the top, and everybody wanted to make money, so there was a big driving force to become really good. So all these social effects play in there. And 
I don't know how they dance. And I saw, I have some, some books where you can see pictures mm -hmm. from like the 50s, what happened in Munich or in Berlin. And they look crazy. They look the same way as what you see in the pictures uh, from, from, from America. Yeah. Just one last thing. Yeah. Um, swing music. Uh, I, I, I know that um, some American swing musicians came to France mm -hmm. because there was no segregation and they could play together with mm -hmm. white musicians. Did they have the same effect with swing dancers or did the swing dancers rather stay in America? I don't know. I because think you know. In Europe, there was no Lindy Hopping. Okay. Yeah. No. They did, just did some Foxtrot stuff. And it was there's interesting footages from 1944 mm -hmm. when American musicians invited Django Rena to join in. Mm -hmm. So you have Django sitting there in the audience, Marlene Dietrich. It's filmed in 1944 in Paris. And people are doing some kind of GI jitter bugging to some Foxtrot music. It doesn't fit at all. Mm -hmm. you, so you see, the GIs don't feel happy. Mm -hmm. And then they open for everybody. And then the French people come and they do Foxtrot, and Foxtrot fits the music. Mm -hmm. So this gypsy swing was never used for Lindy hopping or this mm -hmm. kind of weird jitterbugging, mm -hmm. but it was Foxtrot music. Mm -hmm. So the European mm -hmm. audience would dance mm -hmm. different, a completely different yeah. style than the Americans. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn all, yeah. and the dancing and the bouncy rhythms. And folks, we have to stop now. Yes. I'm sorry, because the band is in the wings yeah. for the sound yeah. check. Okay, and Bobby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you much, Chester. Thank you. Always. Yeah. Always. Thank you, sir, for inviting me. Don't forget it. Oh.